Greetings, my friend. We are all interested in the future, for that is where you and I are going to spend the rest of our lives. And remember, my friend, future events such as these will affect you in the future. I think that as a queer designer, when people look at my work, they first believe that my identity as a transgender person comes first in my creative process. I tend to find that when I am thinking about gender in my clothing and who I want to see wearing my clothing, I don't tend to put a label on it. And I think that that's something that the fashion industry is definitely moving more towards and I can't wait to see more of it. So my name is Tristan Laney. I am an apparel and textile design sophomore right now. I have a minor in theater. I am a transgender man. I definitely wanted to bring kind of a sub idea of queer people taking over space that we usually aren't allowed to be in. Um, saying, seeing a queer person as alien is really nothing new and I took a lot of inspiration from older movies like Mars Attacks and Rocky Horror Picture Show to kind of bring in a lot of that queer influence into my design. I also took a lot of inspiration from movies centering 50s and big bright pastel silhouettes, things like Edward Scissorhands where you're kind of contrasting the perfect American suburbia and the alien. My relationship to Vim is I do a lot of work with their runway shows and I mainly work as a designer. So the Vim Collective is a group of students who twice a year, so once a semester, end up taking together a fashion magazine. I ended up hearing about Vim pretty late into my freshman year. I think I got an email one time uh, from their marketing team or something looking for designers for the fashion show and before then I hadn't heard about them. So I ended up going to a couple meetings and immediately what interested me was the number of people that show up to these meetings in the hundreds of people who are excited to create and come from all different majors trying to kind of accomplish one goal. During the spring of every year, they put together an annual fashion show at the Wharton Center, where they encourage designers from across MSU to create designs for student models to wear and walk the runway in front of their peers. I've always remembered having dreams to be in a fashion show. One of my favorite movies growing up was Barbie Fashion Fairy Tale, and I wanted to have my fairy tale moment. Hey, broken sewing machine. Come on, baby. So yeah, sometimes you'll just get a little knot. <laughs> and you gotta pick it out and hope for the best. I think that most of the time, the queerness I bring to fashion is so much about fun. And that's something that I want to share with everybody as, as much as I can. As a designer, I definitely take femininity and masculinity and play with them. I like to have a lot of fun with breaking gender ideals and gender expressions, things that normal people look at as everyday expressions of themselves are intensely gendered expressions that I think cisgender people don't take the time to interact with enough. I decided on six big looks and then a seventh finale and I started throwing around some ideas together, sketching it all out on uh, my digital media, spending some time doing fun graphic design work, working with different textures, creating a color palette, all really big elements into creating a cohesive collection for me. I always start with looking through online resources and physical media, so older fashion magazines, anything that I can get inspired by to start creating a concept. I just go into projects with like a big, big idea of what I want in my head and sometimes it needs to be just minimized because I don't have anybody who can tell me no. So I can sometimes get like eyes too big for my sewing machine.
So, I don't know about this. This piece might have to be changed a bit. I'm always inspired by anybody who's doing something original and doing something creative, taking ideals that we've seen before and kind of putting them on their head. It's like a knockoff in the Caribbean hotel. And yeah, this is as much as it laces up, so we are gonna take it in a little bit. Okay. Um, so like four or five centimeters. Okay. We're doing okay now. All right, so then you can just take that off and then you're all set. Take it off okay. from the front and then try not to get any of the pins to pop, but if they do, that's okay. totally cool. Okay. I got two models done today and then just that third one right now, so that's three of five done in fittings, which is pretty good for right now. I have almost all of my pieces together. I just have a couple more accessories to do, so I'm looking good in that front, but I definitely think that we're in a good spot right now and I'm looking forward to next week. Sharing my vulnerability with people through my pieces is something that comes very easily to me. I believe because what I create can be interpreted in so many different ways, allowing the audience to interpret themselves when you want to is a freedom that I think apparel especially brings to me. I figured out a long time ago that I would rather do myself and not worry about what anyone else is thinking than try to fit into what other people want from me. So doing what comes naturally to me and what I am inspired by and what is close to me came easiest. Tristan has always been creative. Tristan, from as young as I can remember, was crafting alongside mom, crafting out on their own. Um, as soon as they could figure out how to run a sewing machine was stitching different clothes, um, but I mean, it was never a child that was eating the glue stick, it was just a, a child who used it to make things. For me, I really remember noticing like a lot of designs coming out, a lot of drawings, especially like after watching Alice in Wonderland, there was a lot of dresses and a lot of other fashion that were sketched and drawn. As much as things did come to me, easily, creatively. The process of learning skills, I don't think is anything that can be done naturally. So I always remember struggling with the machine, figuring out different ways things go together, trying to find you know the correct way to do things, make things finished, look nice. And then I'd bring it to my mom and she'd always say, here's a problem, here's a problem, do it again. In like a loving way and trying to get me to learn and teach me things. As a child, I was definitely someone who loved to play dress up. One of my favorite things to do was to take one of the table runners and put it on my head like a veil and walk around with a big cape. And I, oh my goodness, I loved it. Growing up, my mom definitely made an impact on us. Uh, she was a big sewer, so she would sew us a lot of costumes, me and my sister, a lot of costumes, a lot of outfits, little dresses, stuff like that, and always have a super fun time in that. So right now, we are like two hours from start of show, and it's really crazy backstage, and we're getting a lot of, just a lot of energy all the time, and so I'm feeling that, like, anxious and excited, and like, I know everything's gonna go okay, but I'm worried about everything going wrong, and um, all my models are here, which is great, and we're just starting to kind of finally put all the puzzle pieces together, and it's, it's gonna be a really great show. That's so cute. Pretty. Okay, does that feel good? Yeah. So we are like 30 minutes to opening and I'm so excited. We're just getting done with like our final model walkthroughs and everyone's finally feeling like that like fun and excitement that I'm like really excited to kind of push into the performance. Because we would just be backstage. For this year's show, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing that reaction again. This collection is something that is quite a bit different than what I'm 
usually putting on the runway is it's a lot more expressive and campy and dramatic than what I'm usually doing. And I'm hoping that people allow themselves to have fun with my collection. Having a support system in my parents has always been something that has followed me and I've always been really grateful for it. No matter what I do, I know that I can kind of have at least those two people in my corner. And then once I started showing other people my work and engaging with community in my work, it really showed me that what I do has a giant positive impact on others and can bring so much joy. That support really just encourages me to keep going. I think that without that support, I probably would have done something a little more menial that perhaps will get me a little more work. But having those people in your corner and always having somebody tell you, you're doing a good job, I like what you're doing, I saw what you did and I enjoyed it, it fuels me. If there was one message that you could say to Tristan's younger self, what would it be? be? Be you, be you loudly, be you proudly, and don't let anybody tell you you can't do what you want to do. I would definitely say don't let people discourage you, and even if you think that you're different, I think that's exactly what makes you special, and that that's what stands out from the crowd.